What's up guys? Just been to the dentist. I hate the dentist. What's up guys? Uh, I've just come out of the dentist. I've had a tooth taken out. Uh, I hate the dentist anyway. My mouth feels like it's out here. I, I might have to subtitle this because I'm not even sure you'll be able to understand me. <laughs> oh God, I hate the dentist. <laughs> In fact, I might have to come back to this. Oh, that's that's better. It's uh, it's calmed down a bit now. Uh, kids, if you're watching this, when your parents say go and brush your teeth well at bedtime, just do it. This is not a nice experience. Um, anyway, <laughs> I'm back. So it's Thursday. I wasn't around yesterday because I was off doing. Uh, I was actually filming something. You may have seen it on Twitter. Um, something to do with sim racing. Um, I hope it will come out as a decent video. I haven't even looked at the edit yet. But uh, I got together with somebody who's pretty big in the world of sim racing on YouTube. Um, and I hope that there may be something quite interesting come out of it. Uh, not really sure yet. Um, it was all pretty jumbled and chaotic at the time. It's uh, kind of how I do things. Um, but I hope we'll make some sense out of it. Anyway, that was yesterday. Today's Thursday. Uh, today I need your help because tomorrow's video um, is going to be a little look at some of the best F1 or motorsport related Christmas presents. So some of the favourite ones, some of my favourites, um, but I would really like it if you guys have, have got any ideas for that, if, you've, if you know of any, if you've got any that would make great Christmas presents, if you know of any companies that are making things that are in some way motorsport related or F1 related that could be great Christmas present ideas for people I'll try and collate uh, some of the best of those tomorrow and put them in a little list to hopefully give you some good ideas if you're struggling for people uh, or if you want to give some other people some ideas that might be good for you um, so give us a shout, drop me a comment uh, and we'll get, get those together hopefully for tomorrow's video um, right, today what we're looking at today. Um, some news came out yesterday, of course. The, um, the World Council met and ratified uh, the calendar and various rule changes uh, for the 2019 seasons. And of course, part of that included Formula One. So the calendar, no surprises, we knew what that was going to be. Um, it's another big one, another 21 race calendar, uh, another stretch for the teams. Um, and make no mistake, this is going to end up as a 24 or 25 race calendar uh, in the not too distant future. Uh, I'll be quite amazed if for 2020 and certainly for 2021, we're not increasing that number by at least one or two. Um, so it's not going to go back down again, uh, unfortunately, for those who want it. And I'd also be quite interested to know what you think of that. Because as race fans, do you just want more and more and more? Are more races great? You know, the more the better. Um, or would you like to keep the sort of um, the exclusivity of it? The, um, you know, let's not oversaturate the market. I mean, obviously for those people working in the sport, it does become pretty tricky. And for the teams, getting to 25 races undoubtedly means a complete change in the model of the way that they, they operate uh, and do things with, with extra teams, extra headcount. So there are big changes coming uh, for the world of Formula One. But what do you think of it? Definitely should have worn my wellies. Oh God. <laughs> oh. Oh, thanks Pharrell. Pharrell's come back to check I'm okay. Wilson's long gone. Um, right, other changes uh, for the tech and sporting regs were there's a slight increase in the uh, minimum weight of the car. Uh, so that's gone up by just three kilos. And that kind of came uh, from the teams who were pushing to increase that slightly. Uh, actually, because they were struggling to meet um, the, uh, the 740 kilo weight limit that was originally set. But these cars are now heavy. You know what I mean? This A few years ago, these cars were... 
a lot, a lot lighter than that. 100 kilos lighter than that. Um, this is a big, heavy, bulky Formula One car. And I know it's got decent power uh, to match, but it does feel like a Formula One car. It should be really, really light and, and nimble. I know the halos made a big difference to that. The, the, uh, the hybrid power units with the energy store and, and those kind of things all make a big difference. So I guess that's modern Formula One, but seems like a bit of an animal to me. <laughs> There have been a couple of other changes, uh, nothing that's going to change the world, but uh, things around the way that fuel is uh, stored in the garages, uh, testing the way it's transferred between uh, the, the fuel drums and the cars, uh, basically to bring uh, testing in line with the regulations that apply at a race. Those are all regulations that came in following that Williams garage fire, if you remember. Um, we've had a couple of changes around the way that uh, yellow flags are issued under the safety car, nothing that's going to make too much difference uh, to you or I. Uh, grid penalties will be applied slightly differently uh, just to basically stop that ridiculous situation where teams were trying to get out as early as possible on a Friday to make sure that they were the first ones out on track uh, queuing up at the end of pit lane because the, the way that grid penalties were applied was kind of based on that situation, the first one to run on the race weekend. Uh, so that's now changed uh, and will also help force people to go out in qualifying if they've got grid penalties. So probably another sensible change, I would say. Other than that, nothing that's too surprising, uh, nothing we didn't really know about. Uh, we talked on Monday, didn't we? I think it was a question in Ask Elvis uh, about performance ballast or success ballast. Uh, well, interestingly, out of that same World Council meeting yesterday came uh, the decision that WEC, uh, World Endurance Championship have introduced a success ballast system for next season um, and it's going to be quite an interesting one to watch. Um, the way that it can work, the way that it works is based on your performance or your results in the last, the previous two races and also your performance or your standing within the championship um, and there are various penalties applied from sort of 15 kilos for uh, the championship leader, 10 kilos for second and so on and so on. Uh, it means that if you are leading the championship and have a, a race win, for example, um, you could end up with a substantial chunk of ballast on your car for the next event. Uh, 45 or 50 kilos, I think it is. It's going to be really interesting to see how the teams manage that. It's going to be quite an interesting test case, I think. Um, when it came up on, on my video on Monday, it was quite a controversial subject. Lots and lots of, of comments in the comments to that video talking about whether it being a good or bad idea uh, and I think having it in WEC will be a nice way to, to kind of watch how it works, how the teams deal with it, will they come up with clever sporting ways to try and circumnavigate the rule somehow to try and minimise that penalty. Uh, I hope it doesn't detract from the racing, I hope it does what it's intended to do and helps to close up the field and the performance of all cars because if it does exactly that well then maybe it is something worth considering for the future of Formula One. As you saw from earlier in this video, the farmer uh, next door to us has filled the field with sheep. And this morning was the very first time ever that Pharrell had ever come into contact with a sheep. I'm not sure who was most shocked, either the sheep who scarpered right across the other side of the field, or Pharrell who'd kind of suddenly come into contact, been, been confronted with about 150, 200 little balls of, of wool. It was hilarious. I wish I'd had my camera ready at that moment. Um, anyway, let's finish this video off with talking about the halo. The FIA have uh, today released the results of their investigation after the uh, Alonso Leclerc crash at Spa where Alonso's car rolled up over the top of Leclerc's and the front wheel from the McLaren uh, struck quite heavily the halo on Leclerc's car. Um, 
the uh, the resulting uh, investigation has concluded that whilst that front wheel that hit the halo would never have hit Leclerc's head anyway, you know Alonso's car was deflected by that contact with the halo, and what it did prevent potentially was the front wing end plate of Alonso's car from striking the visor of Leclerc's crash helmet. So from that little tiny one piece of information, just the fact that there's a very high chance that one car could have made contact with another driver's crash helmet, and yet the 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 halo prevented that from happening with a, a very high probability prevented that from happening you've got to say the halo has done uh, you know done its job it's done an incredible job that is exactly what it was there for now i remember this time last year when the the halo was on the brink of being introduced uh, people talking about it being the end of the world it was going to be the end of formula one lots of people said to me they wouldn't they weren't going to watch formula one anymore that was it for them they were finished with it they were finished with this sport and i remember thinking really that is enough for you to turn you off a sport that you've been watching for years you're supposedly a fan of and yet just because we've got this yes it's a pretty ugly device bolted onto the top of all cars now that's enough for you to never watch again well i I hope those who said that didn't follow through with that threat and they did watch this this season's championship because you've got to agree at least to some extent that we've had some great moments this year i think the halo was pretty much forgotten about not long actually not long after pre-season testing there was so much else to talk about wasn't there with the uh, hamilton vettel uh, challenges with each other the closeness of the racing that the halo didn't even get mentioned i think that's testament to the fact how, of how good this championship was um I'd love to know your thoughts, um, but anyway, from my point, my perspective, I think it's justified its uh, inclusion in, in modern Formula 1 and in Formula 2. There were some accidents there where it really played a part too. Right, that's it for today. I need your help on this video, so please do hit me up in the comments. I need your suggestions for Christmas presents, please. That would be great. That video hopefully will come at you tomorrow. Uh, I'd love to know your thoughts on the Halo. I'd love to know your thoughts on what else to be discussed in this video. Uh, what else did we discuss in this video? I can't remember. Uh, let me know what you think of the Halo. What are your thoughts? Having had a whole season of it now in Formula 1, good, bad or ugly? <laughs> or somewhere in between. Uh, right, have a good evening. I will talk to you tomorrow. Ta-da.